Now, this last segment I did with a friend of mine named Joey. He's a drummer. He's also a worship leader. We interviewed him several podcasts ago about his worship leading at a church. But I went out to his studio and we set up the lights and the drums and the mics and the video camera and talked a little bit about drums. Now, let me tell you this. If you have drums in your worship band, that is the most dynamic and powerful force that you have in the worship band. And I love drums. They bring the energy. But if not used properly, drums can be one of the biggest headaches that you have in your band as well. It can be a problem. I've gotten emails from several people about talking about drum volume and how much problems it causes in their congregation and so on and so forth. But used properly, the drums are the best part of your worship band. Now what we did is just did a very simple thing talking about a couple different ways to use drums to create momentum and energy within the worship set. Let's go check that out now. Well hey everybody, here we are at uh, School of Fish Studios. I'm with Joey Neiman who's a good friend of mine. He's a worship leader, he's also a drummer, and he's volunteered some of his time so that we could talk about drums. Now most of you, if you're in a modern worship leading situation, deal with drums on a weekly basis. And I'd like to give you some practical tips, and Joey would like to show you some things you can do with your drummer to keep things simple, but at the same time create excitement in the mix. Now the first thing we're going to talk about is what I like to call the four on the floor beat. You can use the four on the floor beat all the time. What we're going to do is we're going to demonstrate using the four on the floor beat as an intro to the song, as well as something that you can use inside of the song, uh, where you can use it sort of as a pad for talking or whatever you want to do. Okay, so the first song we're going to talk about using the four on the floor beat with is Not To Us. It's a great song by Chris Tomlin, a good song to put early in the set because it gets people moving. And the four on the floor beat helps with that. Now what the four on the floor beat is, is the drummer is going to hit the kick drum on every single beat of each measure. So if you're in four, four time signature, it's going to be one or four beats for that measure. Now there's also something happening in the hi-hat as well. Maybe eighth notes if your drummer is, uh, is not ready for anything more than that, or it could be sixteenth notes or some other things like that. So I'm going to have Joey just demonstrate real quick that four on the floor beat, what it sounds like. Got it. He's going to start with eighth notes. So it's real simple, real straightforward. Now I'll play a little bit over the top of that. It's just kind of builds a little anticipation for what's coming on. Now he'll try some 16th notes here. And if your drummer's a little bit more skilled, you can mess around with that a little bit. Okay, so we saw how the four on the floor beat is just a really good way to build some anticipation of what's to come. Now once the song gets there, you really want to make a nice pronounced entry into the song. There are two ways to do that. Actually, there's a bunch of ways to do it, but we're going to show you two that we like to use. The first is just to hit a snare really loud on the fourth beat of the measure and to drop back on whatever else is happening musically, and it just really pops, and it sounds great. A second way you can do it is to use a slow eighth note build and use the toms and the snare to do that and that also builds and enters the song in a big way. The first one we'll show you is the snare on the fourth beat. Here we go. One, two, three, and... Here we go. And we're into the song. Okay, so the second way that you can enter the song in a big way is to use uh, the, the toms and the kick drum and the snare uh, on eighth notes to build up to the song intro. And you can keep this real simple. Maybe just throw a real simple fill in at the end of this. It doesn't have to be flashy. Remember, good drumming isn't always flashy. Good drumming is solid, keeping the beat. So let's try that one. We're going to do the same exact thing. We'll just play a couple measures and then we'll be into the song. One, two, three, and... Here comes that build. Okay, so there's just a little bit about drums. Now you probably noticed that it kind of ended abruptly. I gotta tell you, we filmed for a few hours on a day and then I broke my video camera. 
and so I wasn't able to actually finish that segment. But uh, Joey and I have some plans to do more of that in the future, talk about specific drum beats and different ways to start songs and end songs and things like that. So hopefully that will be helpful to you in your ministry with your drummer. Well, let me wrap this thing up by saying thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. Let me remind you, if you have any questions or comments, ideas of your own, critiques or criticisms, send them to me at phil at baldworshipleader.com. And don't forget to check out the website, baldworshipleader.com. You can leave comments, check out some resources and different downloads that I have there from time to time. And of course, the podcast, which you can find at baldworshipleader.com or by going to iTunes and going to the podcast directory and doing a search for Worship Leader or you can search for Phil Ayers or you can search for Bald Worship Leader. Either one of those searches should help you find the podcast. All right, until next time, have a great week, and we'll talk to you soon.